Uh, we're going to uh, narrate through the, the two burns, uh, as Maurice explained uh, inside. Um, we have one that does not have sprinkler protection in it. That will be the one to your left. And the one on the right with the uh, nice sign over the top as a single residential sprinkler head inside. They are both furnished as close to the same as we could get with the Salvation Army donating some furniture and some bedding and such. Uh, they, each pod is equipped with a smoke alarm which you'll hear the smoke alarms go off. And the one thing to pay attention to is the amount of time the uh, unsprinkled pod, the fire grows, the, the, the rapid rate at which the fire grows. And then when we do the sprinklered room, the speed at which the sprinkler head goes off and uh, suppresses the fire. All right. Mr. LaFond, if you'd uh, ignite the fire, he's going to take a butane lighter and ignite a waste basket full of, fi uh, full of papers in the back of that room. And within a matter of a few seconds, you'll start to see some smoke come off of that waste basket. And then we'll, uh, we'll watch the fire spread. The beauty of having the plexiglass there is you'll be able to see the smoke layer come down as the uh, things in that room start to combust. Okay, you've already heard the smoke alarm go off, and it was quicker than Bill on the clock over there. So um, the smoke alarm goes off in a matter of seconds. It is a small room, granted, but um, again, smoke alarms are your first line of defense to inform you to, that uh, something's wrong and to get out of the house. Uh, once the smoke alarm is going off, it's job, and it's warning you to leave the house. But you'll see uh, when we do the other side with the sprinklers, uh, that it's pretty much going to put out the fire and, and uh, any danger that the family inside the building will be faced. Now, 30 years ago, when furniture was made out of more natural materials, uh, your average time to exit a house safely was a matter of five, seven, eight minutes you had because everything burned a lot slower. It was natural materials. It was a lot denser material. Your couches were made out of uh, different materials than they are now. Nowadays, you have the equivalent of a couple of drums of oil in your living room with the petrochemicals that your furniture is made out of. Uh, and you have a matter of a couple of minutes in which to exit a building as opposed to uh, having quite a bit of time in uh, 30 years ago. You see the fire starting to grow up on, uh, amongst combustibles in, in the wastebasket. It has caught the corner of the couch on fire as well. Now, if this had been an occupied home when that smoke alarm goes off, the, the family would have an opportunity to uh, get up and exit the building quickly. And the fire guys can, uh, in the crowd can tell you about the tragedies about not having a smoke alarm or a working smoke alarm in the building. All of this is going on while there's no alarm going off and the family is going to be caught uh, unable to exit due to the, uh, the smoke or the heat. Now you can start to see the smoke layer starting to bank down on the plexiglass. You see it starting to get darker up at the ceiling. We all remember from grade school science that heat rises. So the hot gases are going up to the ceiling and they're beginning to bank down as the fire starts to spread along the furniture in the back. Uh, from my vantage point here, it looks like it's uh, got quite a hold of that stuffed chair there and it's slowly working its way over to the couch. Now you see the plexiglass just flexed a little bit. The temperature change, it's uh, right now at the floor in that room, it's several hundred degrees. And at the ceiling, it's probably close to 1,200 or 1,500 degrees. Now we're starting to see a very, very rapid increase in fire. And you're approaching the flashover stage. And watch when that flame goes all the way down to the floor. That room has now flashed over at about three minutes and five seconds. If the engine company could go in and extinguish that, please.
Now, three minutes and five seconds. I don't know about your neighborhood and how good the fire department is in your neighborhood, but unless you're across the street from the fire station and the doors are open and the fire fighters are sitting in the trucks, three minutes is a pretty good response time. In some of your rural communities where the, the neighborhoods are much more spread out, three minutes, the call might just be at that time. So that room went to flash over and became deadly for both heat, smoke, and gases in three minutes. Anyone living uh, near that or sleeping or residing in a room near that room would be overcome by the heat and smoke. Five minutes and 30 seconds in. Now, taking the time aside, because that was a very slow moving fire or a slow growing fire, uh, look at the amount of damage in that room, the limited amount of damage in that room at the time the sprinkler head went off. And then when we can contrast the two rooms, once you go side by side, once the uh, uh, we'll shut the sprinkler off and we'll make sure that that room on the side is overhauled uh, safely so everybody can uh, go up and take a look. You look at the amount of damage and with the exception of having to change out the carpet, change out the furniture and maybe some sheetrock in that room, uh, if this was a single bedroom in a house, chances are the family could move back in in a matter of a couple of days as opposed to having to start it from scratch if that fire in the other um, room had occurred inside a home. Before the fire department was able to completely extinguish it, there was uh, quite a bit of damage that would have been done. So at this point, if you want to bear with us for just a second, we'll uh, overhaul the two pods, we'll take down the tape, and we'll get everybody a chance to uh, take a look up close, take your pictures, uh, and go back and tell everybody about all of the uh, wonderful things that residential sprinklers can do for you in your, uh, in your neighborhood.